Hello, this is Dr. E, and we're going to be talking about Unit Section 8.11 on sewage treatment. The essential skills learning objective here is to describe best practices in sewage treatment. And then there's four uh, essential knowledges, primary treatment, secondary treatment, tertiary, and what is, happens prior to discharge. This is just a skill to describe characteristics of an environmental concept, process, or model. Represented visually. So there are four stages in a wastewater treatment plant. Stage one is primary, where the primary physically removes large debris like leaves, plastic, uh, with a screen or grate. Secondary treatment is the biological breakdown of organic, organic material like feces or urine. By bacteria, it's an aerobic process, therefore, it requires oxygen. And tertiary treatment. It's a chemical treatment to reduce pollutant levels such as nitrate, phosphate, or ammonia. In quaternary or disinfection, it's not always used, but there they use UV light, ozone, chlorine, or filters to kill bacteria or other pathogens such as E. coli. Effluent, effluent is the liquid waste that is discharged into surface water or oceans typically from wastewater. Hopefully it's very, very clean. So if we see here, this is a primary, this is a secondary. Primary has screens or grates that filter out large things like paper, plastic, um, and all, their, all other kinds of things. Waste, uh, Hyperion Wastewater Treatment Plant, which is done by LAX, has had things such as motorcycle uh, frames, uh, a telephone pole go into their treatment plant. And unfortunately, they had the grates to stop them. There's then a grate chamber that, that allows sediments such as sand or gravel to settle out. And typically, these are fairly large, and they go slowly through them. Then they go through the primary clarifier. And in the primary clarifier, they add chemicals that allow the the Sl the sl not the sludge, the manure stuff like that, the, the particles to filter down, and that in a, this large chamber goes out the bottom. Then this stuff right here goes up to an aeration tank. In the aeration tank, it is you've got oxygen being filtered uh, going through an aeration tank that is filled with bacteria, and the bacteria because it's aerobic, break down organic molecule material into CO2 nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus. However, at Hyperion, they also have it slightly different. They use different bacteria, and they cause them to go into methane. And they send that methane directly to an electrical plant right next door. And somewhere between 40 and 60% of the electricity used by the uh, waste, uh, Hyperion wastewater they get back from the methane that they sent over there. A secondary treatment removes 70% of phosphorus and 50% of the nitrogen. It does not remove such things as pops and medications or pesticides. Term you need to know is sludge. What comes out down here? Sludge is solid waste that collects at the bottom of tanks in primary and secondary treatment. It is put in a basically a centrifuge and spun and pumped off to concentrate it further. This is dried, if possible, collected, put in a landfill, burned. Sometimes it's taken uh, and put into fertilizer pellets. At Hyperion, they put it into great big, huge trunks and take it up to Kern County, where it's put on uh, agricultural fields such as cotton, not anything that's going to go into anyone's mouth. After primary and secondary treatments, some plants go directly to disinfectant, such as ozone and chlorine and discharge it into surface waters, while some use tertiary treatment to remove no more nutrients before discharge. Hyperion, unfortunately, just does UV, ozone, and chlorine. Tertiary treatment is, uh, uses chemical filters or just plain filters to remove more of the nitrates and phosphates or viruses, bacteria. The critical step here is because the effluent that is discharged into surface water has elevated nitrogen and phosphate levels that leads to eutrophication, and we don't want that. It's expensive and not always used. But what's kind of cool is uh, 
close to Hyperion, there is one of these plants. So we've gone to those before. And when the water leaves this, I have actually taken water that 24 hours before had gone into Hyperion wastewater, and I took it and drank it. And what they do with this filtered water is they pump it down into the, um, remember, Hyperion is close to the ocean. It's down by LAX. They pump this down into groundwater to make sure that there's no any not any saltwater intrusion into the groundwater. Sometimes there's going to be problems such as uh, com in something called a combined sewage and stormwater runoff, where the stormwater goes down into sewers. And most of LA is separate functions where they've got a stormwater drains and they've got a sewer drains. There are some locations where both of them go into the same pipes. When that happens and there's huge rains, it releases raw sewage because the Hyperion or other treatment plants can't handle all the water coming in at once. Now, putting it together uh, is beneficial because it treats stormwater runoff normally. Making sure that the cat poop, the dog poop, all that stuff is treated before it goes down into the ocean. However, if there is raw sewage released, it contaminates surface waters with E. coli, ammonia, nitrates, phosphates, endocrine disruptors, and it comes out looking like that. Yuck! Even treated wastewater effluent released into surface water oftentimes has elevated nitrogen and phosphorus levels and endocrine disruptors. In other words, medications that pass through the body. So here's the FRQ. This is a, a sewage treatment plant. Can you identify a number on the wastewater treatment diagram above that represents a step of primary treatment? And two, can you describe a pollutant removed by this process? Thank you, and I hope that this was helpful.